Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the final panel of the day. This is the fourth panel as part of a whole session on convening small businesses coming back to life, recovering from COVID-19. This last panel is on evangelizing mass entrepreneurship. We have an outstanding lineup of speakers. They include Gunjan Krishna, Commissioner, Commissioner from the Directorate of MSME, Government of Karnataka, Manisha Panwar, IAS Principal Secretary to the Government of Uttarakhand, India, Anki Das, Public Policy Director for India, South and Central Asia at Facebook, Vidit Atre, Founder and CEO of Misho, Dimant Parekh, Founder of The Better India, and this session is moderated by Madan Padaki, Co-Founder of GAME. Madan, over to you for the next hour. Thank you all. GAME is all about catalyzing the ecosystem to act together, to galvanize uh, a mass entrepreneurship movement. And we believe that this is our moment of reckoning in the sense that uh, with, uh, with COVID, uh, of course, there's a huge uh, a set of issues on the health, but uh, uh, I believe that the economic uh, hit that the country will take, and especially the small business take, will be far, far larger. So the last few weeks, we've been in touch with a variety of you, uh, uh, folks uh, like you on the ground. And uh, we thought bringing together these uh, voices together, uh, these insights together to create a learning uh, and a collaborative uh, 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 platform uh, with your story was a good idea and therefore this conversation. Uh, one of the key uh, constructs that we've been working on is that you need a lot of emotional, mental resilience uh, to come out of situations like this. Uh, well, there are of course issues on cash and therefore we need to do something on finance, access to market, technology tools, so on and so forth. Uh, we wanted to focus this conversation on what do we as a group, as a society, as consumers and as concerned citizens and as supporters of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Uh, how do we build a positive narrative amongst, uh, amidst all the mahan that is going around? Uh, how do we amplify stories? What can we do? How do we lift uh, the positivity uh, from uh, this whole dark clouds that exist today? And how can we imbi how can we get entrepreneurs to kind of take uh, uh, courage and uh, what needs to be done? So that's the whole idea of this uh, conversation. Uh, it's uh, fascinating to see uh, an entrepreneur who runs a huge platform for entrepreneurs, with uh, uh, it, uh, who actually uh, has done a stellar job of putting out fantastic stories that India's India can wake up to. Um, Aki. Uh, Facebook has been the uh, torchbearer and the, and, the, and the espousing the cause of uh, SMBs, especially women-owned businesses as well for a long time. And Manisha uh, overseeing uh, uh, industries and commerce for the government of Uttarakhand. If we can start off just with a quick, uh, uh, I would say a minute or two of introduction and uh, especially jump into the, the, the question itself, right? How in, have you seen any other parallels or examples uh, where uh, we've been able to extract positivity out of situations like this. And if something strikes your mind of saying, hey, if that could have been done, then why not this? Maybe I thought that's a, uh, uh, that can be a good uh, conversation starter to say, what needs to be done in situations like this? With it, we can go with you, then we will get to our key money share and then get to the month. I'm Vidit Tatre, I'm founder and CEO of Misho. What we do is we built a platform that lets people start home-based businesses online. Um, now we have close to 3 million individuals who have started their business online uh, using our platform. And we are a marketplace, which means we see two kinds of small businesses in our platform. On the supply side, we see a lot of small manufacturers across the country uh, making products in categories around fashion, lifestyle, and cosmetics, etc. Whereas on the demand side, we see a lot of these women individuals who start boutiques uh, in their houses and sell on social platforms such as WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. So I'll start this conversation by telling you what kind of things we are seeing, right? And what kind of resilience at least we are seeing on the ground on mm -hmm. both sides. So first on the supply side, we have seen some of our small manufacturers react very, very quickly to the situation. So first of all, after figuring out liquidity, most of these guys said, Okay, hey, this is not going to be the story for just next two weeks, next three weeks, next four weeks. Some mm. of these behaviors are going to last at least for the next two quarters. Mm. And what can we do to stay relevant? And we started seeing a lot of our manufacturers quickly shift their manufacturing, for example, from normal apparel to manufacturing masks, 
right? And stuff like that. Understanding what is demand out there. Now, because these guys have never sold masks before, Mm. Uh, and they don't know what's the right way to price it, what's the right specification required, etc. And that's where we come in as an ecosystem mm. partner. We go and tell them this is what is working and this is what is expected. And that data helps them a lot because they can very quickly uh, jump into making a product that will start selling. And we are seeing that they're manufacturing and like selling masks across because that's selling in their conventional categories aren't. Right? So I think this doing things like this reacting to the situation and all of us acting as enablers even in terms of giving new infrastructure uh, providing liquidity or even insights and data intelligence to gravitate towards certain new categories that are in demand so they can continue some business right very very important and we see very similar behavior even on the demand side a lot of categories that are not working anymore uh, people have started to sell categories that they haven't sold before. So they're getting trained. Like we see a lot of our entrepreneurs, women are essentially teachers in the first half of their day conventionally. So now because they can't run their boutique anymore, what they're doing is they are acting as uh, like salesmen for education packages, which are taking off really well, online education packages. Mm. They want to learn and they're skilling themselves for the new world. And they have started to sell very, very well. So again, similar behavior, reacting to the situation, seeing what kind of demand exists, and then like tailoring themselves for that. So I think, especially for small businesses, if we can kind of help these guys, enabling them for this transition, a lot of them will survive the whole period and may even get new opportunities that will help them in the long term. Absolutely. Uh, those are uh, very heartening uh examples in a way uh, with it and maybe I'll park a question that we can revisit uh, you uh, in your uh, on the platform that you see uh, what kind of behaviors or who are the type of people who are exhibiting these kind of behaviors and two uh, how can you then amplify those behaviors across the rest of the folks so that they can behave this person can do it so can I we are seeing as I said like for example on the supply side people who had some kind of uh, I would say network connections by seeing other people. So most of these behaviors, like generally, what does it propagate by seeing each other? Right? Like, hey, could you do it? How do you do it? And I will learn and I will start as well. Mm -hmm. So now what we have started to do is we have started to create some kind of stories, videos online, mm -hmm. shared with all our partners. So people get to know what kind of things people are doing to remain in business. And then people start asking you questions. Okay, hey, I want to start this as well. Right, right now I'm sitting at home. I'm not making any money. What can I do to get started? Can you help me out? Hmm. And then the conversation starts in the right way. So a lot of that is just about communication, sharing stories, people seeing that people like me have started a new business, is prospering, gives you enough confidence for you to get started. Makes a lot of sense. And in a way, our research on how entrepreneurial ecosystems are built is like that, right? We look at somebody else doing something and say, hey, if this person can do it, why can't I do that, right? Uh, so with that, let me uh, uh, invite uh, Anki uh, to share your uh, insights and thoughts on, on what we can do uh, uh, to, to spread positivity. Madan, the first phase of, you know, our response was really focused on the health response because as you know, all of us, have a primary responsibility towards that. And there was a range of product interventions which we made, uh, which is partnering with the federal agency as well as the sub-federal agencies, which is essentially state governments in terms of implementation of uh, the WhatsApp chatbots, uh, right. as well as the messenger chatbots, so that the authentic information in terms of uh, uh, preventive healthcare, how do you keep yourself safe, what are the precautions you need to take, et cetera. Uh, for our citizenry was, uh, you, know, you know, sort of was facilitated and enabled. I think we are firmly in a stage now where we are looking at the economic response because we've realized that the, uh, you know, sort of the concurrent effect of the pandemic has also been almost economic devastation. There is no other way to describe it. The contraction which has happened both on the demand side as well as on the purchasing uh, ability side uh, has been significantly uh, reduced. There's also a last mile problem in terms of the huge logistical issues, which a variety of industry, uh, the small scale sector definitely is facing very intensely and very acutely from a day to day uh, perspective, as you are seeing uh, across India, across the country, more and more hotspots are getting designated. I mean, over the weekend in Delhi, which is where I stay, 
the number of hotspots uh, went up from 33 to 43, right? Which means that there will be uh, further restrictions in terms of ability to move. So obviously then reliance on digital technologies to make sure that there is awareness of uh, sort of the supply side is an important factor, is an important uh, input factor. What we also have to remember is that uh, there are vast swaths of uh, populations, right, which are getting uh, served by uh, rural entrepreneurs. So just another data point to share with you is that in this COVID phase, uh, yeah. we have an active partnership with the common service centers, which mm. is run by Meti, as you know, which is our line mm. ministry. It's a very effective program. It's a pan-India mm. program. Uh, what we have seen is essentially a huge amount of knowledge acquisition uh, desire, which is there on part of uh, micro and small enterprises in rural uh, India and rural areas. Uh, we partnered with the CSC Academy to uh, host um, uh, you know, a series of webinars for about 200 BLEs, village level entrepreneurs. And we saw mm -hmm. that more than 28,000 uh, small and medium enterprises in those rural uh, uh, communities registered for those uh, webinars via the CSC. So obviously it shows that um, in underserved areas, there's this huge desire, whether it's grassroots producers who would mm -hmm. organize themselves to be um, uh, you know, small and micro enterprises to figure out what are the new ways in terms of accessing uh, markets as well as making sure that they are remaining connected with their uh, consumer constituents. Uh, on Facebook as a platform, as you uh, would be aware, that two thirds of our community, like if two thirds of people on Facebook, they would be connected to at least one small and medium enterprise. Like that's the uh, like the, that's the insight which I can share. So obviously, um, mm -hmm. though there are constraints, though there are contraction uh, in the economy overall, that uh, meta or macro behavior hasn't changed. Uh, I think as uh, you know, it becomes clearer as to how goods and services will be transacted as the lockdown processes and sort of uh, the notifications uh, state by state provide that clarity in terms of last mile fulfillment. You will, I think you will see some kind of revival in, in, terms, in terms of the behaviors of people transacting. Uh, currently, we are focused on two things. One is sort of make sure that we are doing everything which we can on the capacity building side to make this knowledge commons available in local languages. And we have created a hub as well as we are partnering with the government, both state as well as uh, the federal government to make sure that that information, uh, that toolkit is available. The second thing which we are doing, and you mentioned in your opening, the question of uh, access to capital, right? Like mm -hmm. that's a very vital need yeah. because there is a huge liquidity uh, problem. And we know sort of the established financial institutions are looking at the more established industry in terms of their financial needs because of the current economic situation. So there has to be different types of models in terms of access to finance, which comes up, uh, which goes to help, uh, you know, the micro sector, which really needs that, which maybe the more organized financial institutions are not catering to at this stage. So globally, we announced a $100 million grant, uh, uh, which is getting, uh, you know, sort of assigned to different countries. Uh, in India, currently, we are studying what that uh, deployment would look like. Um, uh, we would, would deploy this in uh, centers where we to start with in centers where we have offices and employees. So that mm. would mean largely uh, Delhi and Mumbai uh, to start with. Uh, so that model is being developed currently. And if uh, they, I'm sure that that implementation will lead to some learnings in terms of how we should be looking at this entire thing of what is it that we can do, something, something which we can do, which will help this access to capital problem and give some kind of temporary relief in terms of alleviating the liquidity crisis uh, which people are facing. So that's kind of the top line uh, uh, thought which I have at this point in terms of how do we sort of react to this crisis. But I think we are in very early stages of economic response. I think health response in these three weeks, there's a degree of maturation which we have reached in terms of how we should be responding to this as a community. I think economic response, we're just getting started. Sure, thanks, Aki. I think uh, that's kind of a range of uh, interventions that you have uh, lined up. And as you said, these are still early days. Uh, with uh, Currently, there's no certainty of when the end is in sight as well. Uh, so there's a lot more that can be done. Uh, 
uh, Dimak, before I come to you, let me uh, head to uh, get Manisha in to get a state perspective uh, as well and, uh, and hear from you, Manisha, uh, on what you're seeing on the ground and uh, what needs to get done. I think, uh, I mean, to first answer the question as to how we've been coping with the crisis in the government. Of course, initially it was about giving the required permissions to various essential manufacturing units, getting them transport permits and, and those things. That has kind of settled down now. And like most other state governments, uh, a task force uh, has been set up in our state also. And we are part of that to, to uh, deliberate with various sections and, and to actually come up with a, uh, with a proposal for getting the economy uh, back on track. And I would agree with uh, what Aki just said that the first three weeks were more about the health response and now the uh, response to the economic crisis uh, is, is, uh, you know, it is kind of being discussed and uh, being uh, put together. But uh, just to flag a, a very, um, uh, an observation about my state, uh, since uh, Uttarakhand is a disaster-prone state, I mean, every now and then we have these very frequent landslides and uh, 2013 was, uh, was, uh, were bad floods. The Kedarna tragedy happened in 2013. So what has actually happened is that uh, it seems that the rural areas uh, have actually emerged to be more resilient uh, in terms of their response to such a crisis. So mm. I think what uh, uh, Vidit uh, mentioned, uh, uh, about uh, making of masks and other things are uh, rural self-help groups, in fact, have very quickly organized themselves and are uh, majorly into manufacturing of masks now. And uh, I think because uh, mask making is also, mask wearing is going to be compulsory uh, very soon for everybody. So, so there is a market opportunity for them. And as rural development department, we are also helping them with getting the machines in place and, and get required permits to travel to a common point where they can sit and manufacture the mass. So, uh, so, so that is how uh, the people in the rural areas, uh, as we observe, are uh, coping with, uh, with the livelihood issues. Because uh, uh, otherwise, uh, MG Narega is, is, uh, uh, you know, is a major fallback option for uh, uh, daily wage earners. And as of now, although there's no formal uh, uh, ban on starting a work some, under MG Narega, but because of uh, travel restrictions, for practical purposes, we are not able to start new works. And we are hoping that the, uh, once the formal announcement for uh, uh, how the lockdown will continue, we, we will have more information from the central government on this. An important... Um, initiative that we are taking in the state government is about talking to the state level bankers committee because we have to find ways of putting cash in the market. So what uh, we, we've uh, discussed till now is that uh, every year uh, the state, there is a state plan uh, for, um, uh, you know, credit, it's called the annual credit plan. And there, there are priority sector lending uh, components to that. So we've discussed that there is going to be a major front loading this year because you know, unfortunately, governments are also short of money because of the steep uh, uh, downfall in revenues. So it is essentially a huge dependence on banks to front load the, uh, uh, you know, lendings and uh, to start doing it as soon as this uh, lockdown uh, phases out. So that is where the government is. And, and uh, we are, of course, also talking to the various industries associations, be it large industries or MSMEs. Uh, currently, uh, a lot of their petitions relate to uh, demands about exem tax exemptions, GST exemptions, uh, you know, uh, and of course, uh, inability to pay the wages for April. I think that is being stated very clearly that government has to, uh, you know, think uh, of ways of, uh, you know, uh, maybe participating in the burden or allowing them to negotiate with the laborers. So, so the major focus from the association side is currently on asking for incentives. But I think as a way forward and as the economic crisis thing is also sinking in, there are policy uh, uh, suggestions which are also coming up in terms of a more medium term and long term uh, strategy for the state government. So mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't say that the response is, is all tied up, but yes, it, there's a lot of interaction which is happening and we are also trying to learn from other states as well. 
and uh, to just answer the other part of your question in terms of how do we see uh, what do we really need to do on a more long term basis for associating and promoting um, msmes i think uh, mentoring will emerge as a as a major uh, need you know mm. for people in in uh, uh, mid level towns and also in uh, rural areas uh where sometimes uh, a lot of the time access to technology is also kind of intermittent uh we have to find ways of uh, mentoring the msmes so that you know they will have to reject their businesses uh so there has to be a, a structured response to to their problems and uh, i think that is going to become very very important uh, i'll just give you a very small example uttarakhand depends a lot on tourism and hmm. Uh, it starts in may the the um, the religious yatra for badrinath kedarnath which is called the char dham yatra and actually the backbone of the state economy it starts in may and and people survive throughout the year based on earnings during this tourist season so there is this huge question mark in front of all our small hotels and everybody mm. how how will how will this pan out what will happen in this yatra season because we don't see many tourists Uh, and and with these travel restrictions mm. uh, in fact just today you know we were discussing that uh, maybe this year uh, towards uh, the end of may or more like june uh, the, there will be travelers but people would rather uh, prefer to stay in home stays instead of mm. so, so there is this need of uh, you know skilling our home stay owners and training them to be uh, to be covid compliant requirements are are uh, being identified and that's where the state government uh, the state governments would be required to put in their effort thank you for sharing uh, these thoughts and uh, especially you must be in the hot seat at the intersection of rural development and uh, industries and uh, so there must yeah. be a, a lot of uh, yeah. Yeah. both the health and time, yeah i i'm coming uh, recovery should start or response yeah. should start uh we come back to a couple of points you mentioned especially about religious about the tourism and how do you repurpose businesses yes yes uh and how do you then provide them the ideas and the support and i particularly like your idea of the mentoring network yeah uh we'll come back to that uh, dimant uh, to get you into the conversation uh from whatever you are hearing on the ground plus uh, comments made by our other teammates here uh, love to get your perspectives Hi guys quick introduction um, I run uh, the better india as mother net pointed out um, it's a platform which focuses on sharing positive and inspiring stories from across the country the main idea really is to to sh- by by sharing these stories we are actually catalyzing impact on the ground so we influence mindsets and we influence them enough that they go out and you know people and communities come together and make a difference themselves um, so our stories have led to changes in government policies we brought water and sanitation in villages we've helped urban uh, slum schools get funded and more importantly we've taken hundreds of small businesses you know what you probably call go viral by getting their massive visibility and hence uh, more business right and and one of the things that we are starting to see um, in this space while of course a, a lot of the tangible things like access to finance working capital cash flow skills um, kind of remains and that's going to uh, it's that's going to be the very short term sort of fixes we'll have to do i think uh, there are two things that need to change uh, us uh, you know if we want society to kind of change and consume consciously from small businesses right yeah. and these two things for me according to what i see is understanding uh, and empathy right mm. uh, one is we need to understand the value that we add as customers to to these small businesses yeah. we, are, we need to understand the livelihoods we are impacting with every purchase we do from small business and Uh, and really understand what the product is where you know we are purchasing where is it sourced who does it impact right. all of that stuff and i think once we know this as a society um, we start making far more informed choices and yeah. and benefiting these small businesses the the problem today is that that for instance you know product advertisements and stuff never tell you these things right so yeah. and, as a customer we have never been conditioned uh, to care about these things and so there really is no sort of a customer seller empathy bridge mm. uh, which mm. needs to exist uh, mm. so it's it's largely transactional um, and if we really have to pull through i think more than capital this is that sort of an empathy bridge that will have to be built and it will have to be built by the ecosystem it will have to be us um, you know people who 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 kind of influence communities um, governments 
organizations and so on. Um, in our own way, we've been trying to do this with content, right? So we're talking mm-hmm. about things that matter or things that should matter to, cons- mm-hmm. to, cus- to customers and consumers like us. And I think once we normalize these aspects of, of consumption through information and content, um, that's when you'll start to see that mindset kind of change and that saying that leaning towards, you know, buying from small businesses, because let's face it, right? Small businesses are thrown into the fray, uh, wow. competing with massive capitals and attention seeking um, institutions out there. So it's just, so the odds are already stacked against you. So we can only work towards it. If you start building it from a ground up level, the other side from the cons- consumer side uh, to bridge that gap. So that's really how I think, uh, we can start, you know, as a society, start changing our behavior in terms of this thing. And then, of course, what does it mean? It means that we have to build platforms like, you know, like what Vidit has a platform for entrepreneurs to reach larger audiences. Um, there could be storytelling platforms like us, like your story, um, that can really kind of create an impact. And uh, with so many small businesses being there, I think it's it's inevitable and it's imperative for us to do this and give them that visibility, which otherwise they would struggle to do on their own. And uh, that's, that's really how I think that understanding and empathy become two very crucial things for us to build in society. Uh, I think you brought home a very pertinent point, which I want to use to build the next level of conversation. In fact, in one of the previous discussions this morning, uh, interesting that something similar came out. Uh, so the, uh, the idea was that we'll move from e-commerce to what we christen this uh, CC commerce. And CC commerce was collaborative, compassionate commerce, mm. right? Of saying that there should be a lot more consciousness uh, that will creep in about who we are transacting with, yeah. About uh, what is the story behind that that person, and only that kind of empathy can help us uh, pull everybody else up uh, from the from the you know uh, the well that we've fallen into, right? Uh, one of the things we've been thinking about, and you know, there are there are two instances that uh, that have been striking for me in the last few uh, weeks. One was uh, a call that I got from my usual driver network that I used to go to the airport. Uh, I so the, he's an entrepreneur who's curated about thirty drivers, so I don't use the usual networks that go into the. Uh, mm-hmm. the airport, but I just call this guy, and he organizes a driver for me. So there is trust, and there is dependency right uh, there is the whole uh, uh, you can stay confident that the car will come so he called to say listen i'm in trouble i can't pay there's no no way that my car is going uh, and uh, i can't pay my uh, emi can you pay me forward for five trips that you will do in the next next year right uh, an airport trip from my home cost me a thousand bucks so he said he just asked me for an advance of five thousand rupees and he was overwhelmed by the response he got uh, at the end of the day, he texted me to say, please don't forward it to anybody. I got more money than I needed for the next three months of EMI. Right? And I thought I, it was a very heartwarming thing because people were responding. Right? Nobody was saying, boss, I don't know. You'll run away. Right? It was natural. Within a few minutes, he had reached out to hundreds of people. Right? The second uh, thing uh, that, that I keep having conversations with, uh, with, with vendors and street, street to side vendors uh, is the sign of despondency of saying who's going to take care of us? To your point, Diman, uh, they say, listen, nobody listens to us. Our voices are not heard. Uh, I don't know whether uh, we are priority at that highest end for the government or for anybody else. How will we ever come out of this? Right? Now, on the other hand, like the conversation, we hear that there are fantastic stuff being done by the government, by private sector, by by platforms, which are all targeted towards the person, but information is not flowing there. Right? The reassurance that Hamhana, we are with you, is not happening. Right? So the question really is, as a community, as a as a as a system, what ideas do we have to do two things? One is to galvanize the entire consumer base to really look beyond the product or the service and look into the entrepreneur's story and to recognize as an entrepreneur who is trying to feed the family, right? And make a conscious choice that I am going to give a larger part of my business to this person. Two, can we as consumers as citizens go beyond that call of uh, just buying to say, how can I help you? Right? To Manisha, your point of saying, 
hey if i am sitting at home and uh, i'm buying stuff from a food uh, from a food truck or a street side uh, vegetable vendor can i provide some uh, information to him saying that hey if you want to fill up a bank form i'm here to help you fill a bank application form if you want to access a government scheme here is how you can do it so on and so forth uh, how do we build that ethos and how do we build that empathy in the society and therefore what campaigns can we run right should it be like the swachh bharat campaign equivalent which kind of galvanized the masses or should it be like the uh, i give up lpg campaign right which kind of brought together very actionable uh, things by by the consumers right so that's what i'm uh, that i think your thought triggered uh, that and that's uh, for this conversation we been having a game on that so i just want to segue into that but before i do that uh, 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 gunjan welcome we just finished the round of uh, uh, a quick introductions and and what is the response uh, to the economic crisis that's unfolding Mm -hmm. So, and we were just going to the next segment, but uh, the right time. So, if you can just uh, uh, share your uh, share a few minutes of your thoughts on uh, on the economic crisis that is uh, that is that is playing out uh, for several small businesses, and uh, what do you what are the perspectives that you have from where you sit? Uh, small businesses would be worst affected because yeah. they really do not have uh, the flexibility of the liquidity, and they because it's. Uh, generally they whatever they get they use it the working mm. capital and other and right now because of the shutdown most of them are also not in operation except for a few food and the other ventures and even there the bigger players are doing well mm. the smaller players are not really having any foothold there so what as government we are looking at doing is that how we can ensure that we can bring in liquidity so as you know the prime minister has announced some schemes where you know he's talking about credit guarantee has to be increased from 10 lakhs to 20 lakhs having said that what we are looking that what we can do differently within the state so we are now uh, looking at that how we can ensure that there is a liquidity a liquidity can be uh, done you know the credit can be done one is through the institutional mechanism and mm -hmm. that institutional mechanism would be that lower the interest rate ensure that there is a moratorium so that yeah. you know, people can pay later ensure that you know more sidbi and all fill in the thing and they come up in a big way and provide credit but the other ways also is also to strengthen ssgs to mm. ensure that there is a micro credit so that is one thing that we really need to work on second good idea that i got from is say we used to have a lot of chit funds mm. now chit funds is something you know the people had this fear that uh, chit funds you know there are a lot of issues when the platform provider used to run away with the money Yeah. and that was the reason and there would be very few registered so we are looking at how blockchain and technology yeah. and how creating a mechanism can ensure that there is lot of peer to peer lending and that peer to peer lending can ensure because not government cannot come all over but yeah. if we have a good regulatory mechanisms and a mechanism to ensure that a person does not you know hoodwink the whole system yeah. then we can ensure that money is also coming in through you know other people who have money to give in to this time mm. uh, so that is second third is i think we need to look at technology in a big way mm. because what this crisis has showed us that those people who could innovate and who could use technology to ensure that they are getting so there are companies where there are small guys you know who are get, able to you know on whatsapp get orders and they are able to supply you know small guys who are cooking and all that even so technology is a very very important aspect and i think the world will be changed forever so we yeah. need to look at it how technology plays a very important role especially for the msme because msme has been ignoring this part aspect a lot yeah. so there would be many other things that we would be working you know how structurally we can ensure that they can be strengthened how we can ensure that the bigger companies whosoever giving orders should be able to pay them immediately without any time lag all that things can be worked out that will be coming out but these are my immediate thoughts sure thank you for sharing that and uh, the kind of uh, uh, responses are uh, uh, similar to what we are seeing from across the board akhi do you want to get uh, share some ideas and thoughts for us uh, together as an ecosystem to build that empathy i like the point which you talked about compassionate commerce because i think what we often very well uh, you know i mean including myself we don't very often realize is that a transactional uh, you know sort of behavior during the mm. course of our day 
we don't necessarily link it to income generation for an enterprise. And I think that we have to simplistically convey uh, the fact that this transaction, which we are, there are multiple numbers of transactions which we do in a day, is mm. actually leading to income generation for a set of enterprises who are uh, providing local employment, uh, who are providing, you know, sort of food and welfare for the families which are engaged in these kind of enterprises. One thing in the, uh, you know, sort of context of COVID, which I would like to highlight is that we uh, sort of supported uh, this activity in terms of activation of Facebook groups. It's a mm. hyper-local response in terms of, so for instance, I say in South Delhi. So there's a mm. South Delhi group, which ah. really, uh, it's completely citizen-led. Uh, there is obviously a group admin who is very energetic in terms of talking about issues and which people are you know caring about or are excited about currently which essentially is how do i get my essential supplies so via that group uh, that uh, information has been put out like look here is the store these are the timings this is what the decorum which people should follow in this community in terms of accessing the store in order to get your essential supplies or you know food items etc so there is this local community it's almost equivalent to a local uh, newspaper if you will in terms of mm -hmm. providing information that this is how you can engage in your uh, you know sort of transactional needs which you have during the day which we all do because everybody will have to eat thrice a day uh, you know sort of basic necessities of life etc buying your medicines uh, things like that so i think i agree with gunjan in the sense that there are different facets of uh, you know fulfillment where technology can play a role, where both in terms of raising awareness as well as delivery, it mm. will uh, both reduce friction as well as enable more transactions. That's one. And second element is I think we'll have to tap into human nature on the better side of the human nature to mm. understand what is the civic responsibility which we all have at this time. And it does not matter which, you know, where you ladder up in terms of the economic classification or where you ladder up in terms of social classification but really understanding that what is it that we have as a civic responsibility. I think we as industry need to do a lot of introspection and thinking to see what is it that we can do in terms of our CSR budgeting, which we have, which all industry uh, members do, and there are a lot of firms which have that. Uh, a variety of firms have already pledged uh, you know, to do uh, work in different areas, but they have gone mostly towards the area of hunger prevention, because as we have seen, that is a very acute uh, requirement currently, and also in terms of health and education. But maybe the entrepreneurship element has been missing in terms of what does the micro sector require really in terms of access to capital and also the mentorship support. So perhaps creating a consciousness within the CSR practice that mm. what is it that the industrial segment can do in terms of both uh, you know, sort of using this as gap financing, as well as modeling out certain behaviors in terms of the mentorship. For example, what Manisha was talking about, that a lot of hotels are going to face redundancy, whereas you have homestays who don't have the skills. Is there a possibility to create a training platform where the hotel owners are basically training the homestay uh, owners uh, in terms of customer care, et cetera. And then what is the revenue sharing arrangement which is worked out between them? Because what the homestay owners are getting are really an intangible benefit in terms of providing better customer service, but can that customer service be monetized? So mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of local innovations which will need to come in, which then mm -hmm. can be massified in terms of implementation across different states of India. Yeah, fascinating. I think especially given the reach that Facebook has, and as you said, two thirds have a link to some small business or the other. Uh, this can be a great amplifying platform to a to listen to voices and to share stories and so also to highlight such collaborative compassionate commerce models uh, that will emerge uh, with it you want to uh, share your thoughts on uh, on on how do you create this as a movement basically i i'll highlight one more point something that we started to see right now and could be relevant considering the parties here so for example as soon as this lockdown happened, we got insane number of requests from a lot of small businesses who mm. had never sold online anything. Mm. But they said, this is the only way and can you list me? And suddenly you realize that a lot of these are very, very small businesses who have never taken GST registration because mm. below 40 lakhs, you don't need to have a GST registration, right? 
um, if you're selling locally. And these guys did not have a G Street registration. They can't get it like immediately. They can't sell it offline anymore. Online, no platform will let them list because of this rule, right? And suddenly yeah. they're lost. They say, I can't do anything. The only yeah. place they can sell is maybe like a Facebook and WhatsApp because um, there there's no listing, but there's very hard to reach the right people. I can't access tools and resources provided by a platform, etc. So maybe I think at this point in time, taking like, creating some ways of creating exceptions for a small period of time, people who are not prepared for it, obviously don't have the right documentation, etc. Just let them go and list anywhere. Let them sell anything. Go mm-hmm. on any platform. Don't put restrictions. Yeah. Don't stop people from doing it because people like people who never imagined they will go online because of any traditional thinking right now no that's the only way to reach a consumer right that's the only way to access a market so i think it's a very small thing but will open up online as an opportunity to large number of uh, mm. small businesses out there extremely small mm. um, it's they just won't have to sell on a whatsapp group whatsapp group is working people are helping the community but they can go out and sell to more people beyond that as well you're also speaking from how do we as a group uh, uh, talk about policies or ease of doing business itself uh, with the government and the relevant authorities uh, so that we can accelerate this this getting out of the slump yes yeah, yeah makes makes sense uh, Manisha do you want to share yeah I, I just thought I'll make a point about uh, uh, the empathy bit that was mentioned uh, See, to, I mean, to really capitalize on the empathy bit uh, uh, on a long-term basis, you know, it, the emotions, such emotions do wear, up, wear off, you know, there is a timeline to them. Again, I come back to my mentoring bit because we deal with farmer producer organizations, you know, mm. that stuff is as good as or even better than a lot of things which are sold in the market. So, uh, so, so to really help them, you know, put forward a face in the market that people are getting value for their money. I mean, it's, they are not just buying it only for empathy, you know, they are also getting value for money. And mm. the product is, all, is as good if, if not better. So, uh, so for me, I think I have, venturing networks are very, very important for MSMEs, you know, to really move forward. Very well. Yeah, and I think how do you then make mentoring a mass movement itself? How do you get as many mentors as possible? Can your local uh, homemaker be a mentor to a street uh, uh, food vendor itself can be thought through? Anki, I realize that you have a hard stop in a few minutes uh, before I pull in Gunjan and uh, Dimant. Uh, just want to check if you had any, uh, any uh, words for us as an ecosystem. What should we be doing and, and what do you do? Game is really not an organization, it's all of us. What should game be doing in a situation like this? If you can share your thoughts, then we can. I think there are two things which will be insanely yes. helpful if game were to sort of apply itself to it. Mm. One is essentially there's a lot of uh, the skill building and the knowledge commons development work, uh, the mentoring requirements which Manisha talked about, uh, the kind of stuff which Vidit is doing as a practitioner. I think if, the, if there was a hub which was created, which essentially is kind of a DIY, DIY for mm-hmm. a micro enterprise. And again, I would harp on local language uh, availability of this uh, training materials. It would be very useful in mm-hmm. terms of sort of just igniting that capacity. That's one. And the mm-hmm. second thing I think which will be, which will uh, uniquely fall on game is that, um, you know, how do you sort of make sure that you create an instrumentation around co- compassion? The instrumentation mm. which the state did, uh, and rightly so, the Union of India did, was to create relevant uh, amendments in the Companies Act of India, which created the CSR contribution, right? Mm. Because you ha- need an instrument when you're talking of governance. And that's what was done. I think what game could probably do is to sort of take the CSR mold to start advocating for what is the kind of entrepreneurship support that this could be applied to. Currently, it's happening in an ad hoc manner. But I think there needs to be voice on the table in terms of saying that this is a, a, these are a class of beneficiaries which needs to be looked at, which is going to be in acute distress. They play a very big role in terms of sustainability of our society and the economic engine. And I think that there needs to be a effort in terms of pooling of finances to meet the gap financing, which I think financial institutions have stretched. They can't look at this segment. 
I think it would be useful for CSR monies to be applied to this across the board. One point. Yeah, go ahead. I was about to come to you. So I wanted, Madan, we have had uh, many chats before and we were actually on a very final stages of working out our Sarthak platform. Yes. Idea of, of the Sarthak, uh, we are actually in uh, discussion with Mindtree before uh, and they were actually developing this platform for us. Mm -hmm. The idea is that what uh, we talked about here is to have a platform where mentoring can happen, where all these uh, supply chain issues, the issues related to marketplace issues, the issues related to, you know, getting a good technology in place all can happen on one platform and we are ready to go. In fact, if game wants to partner with us, we are all set. We have the SOPs ready. We have the entire plan. Plus we have the government money budgetary support also ready for it. Fantastic. No, and I think as they say, every idea, there must be a time that must kind of yeah. come. Together. Yes. <laughs> so time we should push happen. that. Yeah. We should push that. And I think my, my sense is that what you're saying is absolutely true at a larger level. It is just not even mentoring. I would I would extend mentoring into even emotional support, right? Somewhere the entrepreneurs feel that boss, I have somebody who's who's watching my back, right? Who who has my who has my interest at heart. And how do we build that? And if you can do it through some structured models, uh, that will be fantastic. In fact, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Gunjan, I, my mind keeps going back to the conversation that we had on what you did in Vartha on actually helping and building a brand called Vardhini. So it is just not product or produce, but we were also, you're also giving an emotional connect to consumers on the brand, right? So if I, as a consumer bought Vardhini, it was just not about buying the product. It was also about an emotional connect saying I've helped. Uh, I've, I've been a part of a larger entrepreneurial journey of another woman's home. And I think maybe that's the kind of a campaign that we need to kind of build uh, to make this uh, come alive in a much stronger way. Yeah. Uh, Dimant, uh, over to you to kind of, if you can respond, react, and, and in your mind, what will a campaign like this look like? How, how can we make this come alive? No, I think, uh, you know, I, I go back to this whole gap between consumers and sellers, right? I think we are... Uh, I think from a government and from organizations standpoint, we're, we're brainstorming a lot and we're coming up with a lot of new ideas. The government has released this uh, $13 billion uh, sort of uh, grant also to kind of come in and help out. There's a package there, a relief package. Um, you know, the, the problem I've seen, uh, Madan, over the last two weeks, we've been basically doing weekly webinars uh, with mm. all small businesses. We're just getting mm. small businesses to come together and say, mm. Shh, you know, every, uh, every uh, week we're doing this. Um, okay. And very interestingly, what has really emerged is that a um, lot of people from the same sector have the same issues and they don't know where to seek the solutions mm. and just getting them together under the same sort of a Zoom call helped mm. people share. So I'll tell you one, when the lockdown announced on the next day, we had a webinar and mm. the first question, three people came in from the manufacturing sector. They said, yes, work from home and all is good for people like, you know, like digital and e-commerce and all of that. What do I do? My, my factory has to run in order to, to supply. What can I do? So then it turned out that there was another guy who was also from the manufacturing sector. And he said that they are basically taking this downtime to do R&D and come up with newer products. So the design phase has now got extended. And so then this is a great idea for this guy. He said, okay, fine. That's very interesting. Let me actually do that so that I have more products when the factory starts. So to me, I think the bigger issue is that mm. there is a complete lack of information going mm. from uh, the, the level at which government and organizations are to the mm. actual MSMEs on the ground. And, mm. and we need to get this information in the languages that they understand. Yeah. You know, a lot of the, so the government has a lot of great policies. We have a lot of packages. We have a lot of stuff. I think the way we are conducting these webinars, Madan, we need to conduct this with small businesses, small businesses and, yeah. and even smaller businesses, yeah. you know, like the driver guy who we're talking to, with, with, which has 30 cabs. Mm. He's the kind of guy we need to have webinars with in Canada in, yeah. in uh, every week, you right. know, and that is when I think the information asymmetry, if that gets solved, people are enterprising enough to pick it up and find their way. Today, the yeah. hustle is not happening because the information gap is so huge yeah. between us and that, you know, the sector out there. And so that's really what I want to think that we need to create that platform. We need to create that movement, bring the information down 
and trickle it down to people make it relatable in the languages they understand so which means we need to kind of get thousands of us doing this with small businesses on a regular basis and and bringing and reducing that information asymmetry uh learning from one another so on and so forth yeah you know the simplest thing, this is an idea i've been having and obviously we haven't figured out someone to kind of come in and partner with but think about uh-huh. this think about a khan academy uh-huh. for small businesses lovely right it it's yeah. free to use it's yeah. got the best content created by people like you know people who are there on this panel uh people who've been successful in building businesses and it's accessible in every single regional language and it's free you know mm. i think i think that's something we need to really build out and and bring it to mobile phones which is uh, which everyone has we need to kind of get to that level really democratize information to the last leg in fact to this is in a way what aki was also referring to as a dyi for small businesses where all information training is available people are learning from one another uh terrific so to kind of bring it to a close we have a few minutes to uh to get to a close uh, i'll ask the same question that i asked aki uh and you know gunjan has already addressed it from a mentoring platform sarthak if there is one thing that you would want us game uh, to collaborate on uh to work together uh, as an ecosystem uh, what would that one thing be right so if you can uh, amplify that that will be uh, a good take away for all of us to start working together on on something concrete on the ground when it comes to sarthak uh, uh-huh. it's not just the mentoring we are trying to get all the stakeholders on one platform Hmm. now uh, the main important for any platform is it to ensure that it gets in- institutionalized yes. the issue happens is the many in- initiatives come and they die down and very few people then you know really know about them we have a mechanism where the partners are all the people who are actually you know this they it's very intellect you know hmm. just not be a government initiative because the government initiative alone will not help Hmm. so what we want is a interconnectedness to be built here so that it can continue to grow so i was having discussion even with flipkart and amazons and the others also the hmm. world, because they have many initiatives right. like so we were talking to wadwani group for something so why not get best of the people hmm. who are into mentoring who are into other things say for example if we have to create market place market place are like four five top guys get them on board it here mm. so they can run their own courses on us so it becomes a one place where suppose if you're looking for technology and solutions because if you want to really run your business effectively and efficiently then you need business uh, technology solutions now those they find it prohibitive because of the prices but yeah. if i get zoho here if i get all the other people here and you know ask them you know to interact with them and develop those small you know small modules for the msme it becomes very easy yeah. so this is the entire platform that we have designed it but a i need a group of people who are very enthusiastic and take it forward because my time gets divided into many oh. things and i yeah. have a group which is working on it Wonderful. we just because of covid now we've just taken away and we have little money but institutionalization and how it will run you know because we can have along with that a center for excellence and a company may be running it or something else we really right. need to think through that uh would it you want to come in and share your you know one ask yeah so again um i'll from our perspective and i think what we have seen at misho i think one big uh, value add at this point in time can be that there are large platforms in india that now cover a lot of small businesses right mm. you look at large e-commerce now you look at like swiggy the world zomato the world we have a lot of small businesses i mm. think um through them a lot of specific needs issues can come up and like using those platforms to first of all gain information collaborate with the government figure out certain solutions mm-hmm. and the other way around as well right asking these platforms to help out the small businesses yeah. with whatever insights data intelligence tools etc that's available i think the kind of impact that can happen to a lot of small businesses in a very short span of time is really really possible like yeah. we see we started to do webinars every sunday now and we mm-hmm. to engage our sellers and we just ask people to share what they are doing that is working out for them and everyone else is with a notebook yeah. noting down everything that's happening so we are what we are trying to do is do information sharing 
within our user base. And we also do uh, webinars from our side where we communicate what kind of best practices that are working in terms of logistics, in terms of making pe like customers comfortable that your products are sanitized, etc. Right. So a lot of this can effectively happen, especially for small businesses by these large platforms, and they should be leveraged really well for this. Uh, Manisha? You know, there is a need to build synergies with institutions who are already there. For example, there are these uh, incubators who are currently more engaged startup, but, but there are mentors there. And uh, for example, there are incubators in the IITs and the IIMs as well as in some other universities. Who can probably, I mean, one can reach out to them and the state governments can also uh, reach out to them to, to also, you know, take their support in building up this mentoring network, apart from what uh, Vidit has mentioned and what, uh, before and what Gunjan was mentioning. Uh, apart from the big players, we can also, you know, look at these institutions and also, yeah. you know, co-op them. In this yeah. Bringing all together and making sure everybody works in, in some sort of synchronized fashion. Yeah. yeah. It would be lovely to see an initiative to really help bring in digital literacy, financial literacy, mm. and business literacy at mm. that bottom of the strata of small businesses. I'm talking about even below micro entrepreneurs, right? Which, which is which is your mass entrepreneurship yeah. thing that you're kind of focusing on. Um, uh, we we have a marketplace. It's a, it's a small marketplace called Carnival, which has about 900 small enterprises, 50% of them are selling online for the first time. And the mm. biggest issue was that there is zero literacy on yeah. finance, on digital inventory management, all of that, right? These are not your um, urban guys, right? This is someone village in uh, Andhra and stuff trying to come on board. I think that is, if, if we actually solve for that, right, that itself will be really yeah. huge to propel us to the next level from an entrepreneurship perspective. So um, if you have any sort of initiative to you know kind of do that i'd love to i'd love to see if we, i can kind of you know also support that or be a part of it to really solve that information gap there so it's so heartening to hear uh, a lot of positive ideas that we can go after which is uh, the need of the hour and we need to get action on the ground thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and spending time with us uh, the key words that uh, that that kind of were embedded in my uh, mind or you know what you mentioned about the Khan Academy for SMEs and really doing a distributed model of learning. Uh, Vidit also uh, alluded to that uh, peer to peer, not just financing, but peer to peer learning and peer to peer yeah. support, right? Uh, to enable uh, millions of people to become mentors and to support small businesses and to get that understanding and empathy into the psyche of consumers itself, and therefore move towards the more collaborative, compassionate commerce. Uh, and uh, how do we then bring it all together so that each of us are, are building on each other's strengths yeah. and working with each other rather than uh, reinventing the wheel? Uh, I think we have little time and resources now to waste on, uh, on re reinventing the wheel. So I really wish uh, and hope that uh, this conversation that we got started out, maybe in a, in a few weeks or a month, we can come back and report back saying that this is how we all work with each other and this is what is emerging. Uh, which can then act as uh, as uh, beacons for others. Right? So thank you so much and uh, uh, wishing all of us all the very best in this uh, battle and uh, look forward to working with uh, each one of you uh, very, very deeply and meaningfully.